You know that to say that time is a great healer, and, but it's not. No. Because no. 16 county titles in 20 years and seven Connacht Club Connacht. championships and five all Ireland Club finals, like, I mean, that would tell you that this club and this group of guys were serial winners. Well, the glory days were, for us, the 60s were the glory days. We, we were a very young, inexperienced team. We won three county titles and we won seven or eight leagues in a row. We won the Rock Cup every year for seven or eight years. Uh, we didn't win enough championships. Not that we weren't good enough, but because we never prepared. Oh, a lot of great people came along. We had a lot of people behind the scenes as well who worked so hard. There's Tony, some of his medals. Tony McManus and uh, Eamon is, is there as well. And over here then you have the, uh, the 1990 County Final Senior. So we just kept that ball as we did a few more back along there. And as a memento of the time. And I suppose if you said to someone that time, we'll have that in 25 years time, they'd laugh at you. Well, it's funny, like, I mean, the fact that I'd be a lot younger than you two lads, that when I came into the scene, you would have had county titles under your belts at that stage, but we would have been training at underage level and would have been watching you training. And I remember thinking, yeah, this would be all right, we'd be able to step up to this. And then I remember when you got up to senior training, and you two in particular, like, uh, young lads weren't spared. Like, I mean, you were here on the night and you were here to train. And that was very much the team running through it at the time, that when you came here, you came to train because um, you could do your socialising somewhere else, but when you came to Johnstown and talked out, there was no way out of it. You, you, you had to suffer or just didn't, just don't be here. I remember that 1982, after winning the tour, beating Tour of I spent, I went from Banislaw to, to Dublin Hospital and uh, I came out and uh, the training started for the, the, the All-Ireland semi-final and I sneaked out training uh, every night here. Tony brought my gear looked after my gear. My parents never knew I was training or anything. And we've had St. Gauls here on a snowy day and uh, my parents didn't think I thought I was only going to matches and I appeared at half time and came on and created a bit of a scene. Tony was nearly assaulted over it. From back in the year we started winning that all Ireland semi-final. We were very, very lucky that day. St. Gauls were the, were the better side. We robbed them in fairness that year. We weren't as good as St. Gauls, but we, we won the match. It was absolutely at Harbour. I remember I was only young at the time. I was actually a sub that time, and I remember the winning goal was scored down that end. I remember Owen McManus robbed a guy coming out. The game was over. Gauls had it won. They were celebrating in the stands, so they were, and their full back came out. I remember Owen met him and hit him a shoulder, and the ball broke. And our centre forward, Merton McManus, won it at the time. He passed away since, Lord rest him, and um, he won it. And of course, Tony. You know this idea of following guys back? Well, he didn't follow anyone back, he just stayed inside. So as a result, when the ball broke down and Merton looked up, Tony was inside on his own and he gave it into him. And in fairness, when it came to a one-on-one, -on -one, this guy rarely ever missed. And he scored that goal and that started a, a dynasty, if you like, that went on for the next four or five or six or seven years. Like so Just on that, that particular goal changed so much. It brought us on to the next level. We had dominated a county, then we were get doing well at Connacht, and then that brought us into national level. And just on that, and that was down at that very end of that goal in probably what was one of the coldest days that we played football up here, I'd say. So the All Ireland final against Finbars, I would feel it was the one we really left behind. It was the one that I'd feel myself, I had one of my weakest games ever for, for Clan. And no, that's, I was, remember it was Mark and John Myler who was mm. the Cork, who went into Hurland afterwards and David Myler's father now. But that's a game that really rankles that I feel myself that we left behind us. You know, a lot of us didn't play well. So that was one game that rankles with me even now that we, sh we could have like to sort of won, won it. And I felt if we had won that, we could have got one of them be a couple of more, but that one hurt. Him, gives it into Con, managed to read it on his own, turns. Big goal for Matt Murphy! Oh, brilliant goal! Oh, excellent stuff from Bart Indas. The score, Bart Indas, 2 7. Can again a Ross Common, 7 points. But I think the one big big weakness we had, we never had a big midfielder. No. 
Yeah, we had nobody six foot three, six foot four. No. In any of the years. In any of the years, yeah. Like, yeah. That's why we survived outside of Crop Park. This fellow was a midfield all the time. Yeah. 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 Not, not over there, this fellow yeah, here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so we never had a big midfielder, that, you know, like six foot four. And, and when we came up, we went to Crop Park. It is an issue in Crop Park. Yeah, it's a big it's issue. It's not yeah. a big issue down the country, you know, when you're, when you're mm. in, in the, the smaller pitches. When you went to Crop Park, you need a big man around the middle of the field, and we always struggled around the middle of the field. Yeah, the guy that time, Tony Leahy, who mm. was playing, there was there thereabouts on the Cork team. And as you say, if you go on, like, I mean, it was on the McGovern's playing with, with the burden. And then when we got to 1989 against Nemo, you had Shea Fahey was there. And, so even, and then Bodley Class had a guy called Raymond Dan. So we nearly mm. always came up against a big, tall midfielder, yeah. strong midfielders, yeah. Well, especially, in, I think, in Crow Park, you have to have physique and height because it's the biggest pitch. That's as simple as I would put it. Like you know, it's the biggest pitch that you have to look at as a player when you get out there, and the surroundings make it even more expansive. Yeah. Like you know, because they're miles away from you, the stands and, and the people and all that. And like if you look at it, <coughs> Port Leash beat us in a final, and like when in an, in an Ireland semi final we went back and bet them in their own home ground. Yeah. Burn beat us in Crow Park. The following year we went up to the Burn and beat them on their home ground. Where it said they were never beaten, you know. You, you couldn't let the night go or the discussion go without mentioning Donny Shine, you know. He was so much part of the whole thing. But he meant so much to this team and he meant so much to the whole parish, you know. And he was, like, just at his funeral alone, just the way he brought the whole county, not just the county, like, you had people up from Castle Island, you had people down in the Burn, you know. And, like, he forged friendships with all these clubs. Where I, I might just, maybe with the fellow with Mark or whatever, but Donny went out of his way to get to know people, and he did. And Donny Buckley got involved with us last year, involved, you know, for the county final and coached him for a few weeks. And like he said, every time he looks, he and Donny were first close. And every time he looks, every Monday morning, first thing he looks at is Clanny Gale scoreline. See what Clanny Gale are doing, you know. And Donny was all part of that. He, he was great to build in the burn. If they were coming down or anywhere now around that lawn, they'd ring Donny and they'd be trying to organise a game of golf. And from a younger point, a younger, a younger player's point of view, would, you would love to have one one. For Donny Shine, for or Donny for Tony White, yeah. or as the lad yeah. says, yeah. the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people yeah. that travel by train. Paddy's Day, Eamon said it earlier on, it was it was and so yeah. unique, like four years in a row, what you do on Paddy's Day, we went to the other and could find it to see Clandia. Yeah.